In this video, we'll walk through how to test APIs in Postman. We'll start with the basics of writing tests against JSON responses, then cover ways you can test against XML APIs. We'll look into automating tests using the Collection Runner, Postman CLI, and CICD providers, then take a brief look at contract testing from both the producer and consumer perspectives. We'll then wrap up with a brief introduction to mock servers. Let's begin. When working with a request in Postman, you'll see a set of tabs under the URL bar. We'll be focusing on the pre-request and test script tabs. Both tabs use the Postman Sandbox, a runtime based on Node.js that allows you to add dynamic behavior to requests and collections. The pre-request tab allows you to do any processing needed before sending a request, like setting variable values, and any code here runs before the request is sent. The Test tab allows for any post-processing after a request is sent and includes the ability to write tests for assessing response data. If you open up the right side panel on either sandbox, you'll see a list of test snippets. These are pre-written blocks of code that will be injected when you click on them. There's a variety of different options. Some will help you to retrieve the data from variables, some are boilerplate tests, and some will perform common utility functions. Let's take a closer look at one of the pre-written tests. The test tab sandbox has the Chai.js library built in, so you can use Chai's behavior-driven development syntax to create readable test assertions. PM is the Postman object and has access to our Postman application API methods, as well as the Chai testing library. For example, the dot test here is called to start building a test. This test call first takes a stream parameter, the name of our test. Make sure to give this a name that is unique and descriptive enough that you'll be able to tell what it's testing in the aggregated test summary. It also takes a function as a block of code that will expect a true or false value for whether the test passed or not. Once we get down to writing the assertion, you can see we're using the same PM object, but this time accessing the response. Once you start typing, Postman will start to auto-suggest options, which can be helpful when you're starting to write your own tests. From here, we'll use Chai's syntax to chain together an assertion testing that our status is 200. You can have multiple assertions here and you can also write regular JavaScript code inside or outside of the test block to parse and manipulate data as needed. If you're working with an API that returns XML responses, Postman has a couple tools that may be useful here as well. We mentioned the test snippets feature earlier, and there's one in particular that might be of use. If we scroll down to the convert XML body to a JSON object, this snippet will do just as it says and convert your XML response to JSON using the built-in XML to JSON library. From there, you can write tests against the JSON objects as we've covered before. You could also use a library like Cheerio.js to parse languages like HTML and XML directly. Because this library is built into the Postman sandbox, we can use the require method and assign it to a variable to start using it. In the next block, we'll load in our response body and set up our options. We can then start to use Cheerio's methods to parse values from the returned XML. Here, we're checking that this page element has a value of one and our test is passing. Once you start to write tests for multiple requests, you may come across a situation where you're writing the same tests over and over. If this is the case, you may consider moving some of the repeated tests to either the folder or collection level. Collections and folders both have the same pre-request and test sandbox that's present at the request level and can be used for writing tests or any logic that needs to be applied for all of its child requests. If scripts are present at multiple levels, this graphic illustrates the order in which they'll be resolved, starting from the collection level, then proceeding to the folder, then request level, for both pre-request and test scripts. Once you get your tests working at the request level, you can use the collection runner to start automating your tests instead of running requests individually. From a collection or folder overview page, find the Run button, and you'll be presented with some options for setting up your run. From here, you can specify the number of iterations, add a data file to populate variables, and adjust several other settings. By default, requests will run in the order that they're listed in the collection, but you can also drag and drop requests to reorder them or uncheck the box next to a request to exclude it from a collection run. Once you have your options configured, click the Run button and you'll start to see requests being executed.
After the run has completed, you can filter by passed or failed tests and click into request to see more details. You can also see details of your past runs by navigating to the Runs tab from the Collection Overview page. Once you have your collections running with the Collection Runner, you may want to take things a step further and start running them via the command line. The Postman CLI is a command line collection runner that can help you do this. If we go to the same collection runner window and click the Automate Runs via CLI option, you'll see that it's already started to set up the syntax of that for us. The first line here is logging us into the CLI, which needs an API key. You can generate one here or use an existing one. The next line, Postman Collection Run, specifies the ID of our collection as well as our selected environment, as the CLI will fetch these via the Postman API during our run. You can also reference collections and environments as local files if you prefer. Let's try our same collection run using the Postman CLI. I've already logged in, so I'll just paste the command, and we can see that the test output is displayed in our terminal. We can see a summary of our test run and more information about what failed and why. Finally, the output is telling us that our run results were uploaded to the Postman Cloud. This is especially helpful in a team setting so that others can see the testing progress over time and results of local runs aren't siloed to a single developer. The Postman CLI also provides an option to run validation and security checks against your API definition file programmatically with the Postman API lint command. This can take either a local file name, as shown here, or an API UUID, which you can find by going to the information icon on an API. Running these lending checks programmatically, or perhaps as part of your pipeline, can be helpful in ensuring that any changes made to that file are in line with your organization's standards, even when working outside of Postman. If you're setting up the Postman CLI for use with the CI-CD provider, Postman can make this process a little easier as well. From the Postman CLI configuration page, you can click into the CI-CD configuration link and start to choose options to set up your pipeline run. After specifying your collection and environments, you'll be able to choose your CI-CD provider and receive a pre-populated configuration file depending on which one you chose. Additionally, if you're configuring your Postman CLI command from the APIs tab under Tests and Automation, you'll have the option to include the API linting checks as a step in your pipeline. Let's look at an integration that's already been set up in the API Test tab. Here, we're able to see the details of each collection run, including the run details and the API validation checks, as well as kick off a new build, all without leaving the app. Another testing practice you may want to consider are contract tests. Ensuring the API definition you're building from and have given your API consumers to build on top of matches what is actually implemented. Whether you're the producer or consumer in this scenario, Postman can help. We'll start with producer-driven contract testing. In this scenario, you already have an API specification file that outlines exactly how your API should work. As you start to develop your API, however, it's very possible that the implementation might have slight inconsistencies. Perhaps a parameter marked as optional in the original specification ends up required in the final API. Building off of a project started by a member of the Postman community, Postman provides a contract test generator for both OpenAPI 2 and one for OpenAPI 3. When you provide your API definition and run the collection against your live implementation, the utility will optionally validate your definition file against a linting and style guide, generate a series of tests to execute against each endpoint, execute those tests, then produce results for review in the collection runner. This is a great resource to include in your CI-CD setup to make sure each new release aligns with the definition file you provided to consumers of your API. If your team uses APIs created and maintained by other teams within your organization, creating your own contract tests can be helpful in preventing breaking changes. In consumer-driven contract testing, the consumer writes a contract that describes how they are using the API, which may just be a subset of the available endpoints. In this type of testing, you aren't testing the functionality of the API, only that the properties you're using are present and that the values meet your needs. Once written, 
your team and other consumers can share these contract collections with the provider so that they can gain insight into the obligations they need to fulfill for each individual consumer. To set up a consumer-driven contract test, you could start by writing assertions similar to what we've shown before, like stating that the response should have a JSON property, maybe ID, and that it should be a string. You could go on to do this for each property that you're using. As another option, you could use the built-in AJV library to define a schema of the data you're expecting and test all of your expectations in that one assertion. Here's an example of a test using AJV. You can see we're setting up our schema with all the properties we'll need, then creating a test where we'll import and set up a new AJV object. We then pass in our schema and response body to the validate method, and we can test against the resulting Boolean that's returned. As you're setting up your contract tests or are doing any sort of work where you may want to develop against a service that isn't available yet, mock servers can help to keep the work moving along. A mock server simulates the behavior of a real API server by accepting requests and returning responses. By adding a mock server to your collection and adding examples to your requests, you can simulate the behavior of a real API. When you send a request to a mock server, Postman matches the request to a saved example in your collection. Postman then responds with the data you added to the example. To view existing mock servers in your workspace, select mock servers in the sidebar. That wraps up our overview of testing in Postman. To recap, we've covered writing tests at the collection and request level, as well as ways you can test against XML responses. We looked at automating testing using the collection runner and the Postman CLI, we took a brief look at contract testing from both the producer and consumer perspective, and finally talked about how mock servers can help speed up the development and testing process.